Okay, hello everybody. Let's talk about the paired t-test. And I want to talk about some general things that haven't shown up in the canned uh, video lectures I've been showing you. And also point out some things that we'll be talking about throughout the semester. Uh, first off, paired t-test, that's just one way of, uh, you know, one term to describe it. Uh, let's turn on my laser pointer. There we go. And other terms that are used almost synonymously are related samples t-test, match samples t-test, within persons t-test, dependent t-test, repeated measures t-test. They all generally mean the same thing. Uh, and textbooks will use different terms. So just to be aware of that, uh, paired t-test or uh, matched samples or repeated measures, that probably makes the most sense to me, but people use whatever. And even though people are using whatever, there are basically three basic types of data that will be used for a paired t-test. The first type of data is within-person contrast data. And this is when you have the same person, but different variables, but those different variables have to use the same scale. And so, for example, uh, you could, uh, you know, hopefully you're starting to recognize something like this. We have a stranger rape versus date rape independent variable. And then from the same person, we ask them, after reading a vignette on a rape situation, we ask them to rate the man's responsibility for the rape on a 1 to 100 scale and the woman's responsibility for the rape on a 1 to 100 scale. Uh, and then we conduct a paired t-test on that. And we subtract out the uh, woman's uh, score from the man's score. And uh, so doing it that way would give us, if it's significant, that would mean that they blame men more than women, which of course they do based on defensive attributions. Uh, now that I've talked about this first type of data, let me point out something that's common to everything. Uh, not just paired t-tests, but t-tests in general, and analysis of variance and everything else we're doing statistically here. When we do that within person contrast, we're taking two measures from the same subject. And you may say to yourself, you know, different subjects will respond to the experiment differently, but uh, the same subject may respond to the experiment and respond to answering uh, questions the same way or with some similarity. So we have Steve and Larry here. Larry uh, and Steve both attribute much more blame to the man than the woman. But you notice that Steve uh, prefers to use the ends of the continuum and Larry tends to hedge his bets. And so what we're counting on in doing the paired t-test is that there is some type of commonality between the way uh, people are responding within themselves. And so we can use that and by doing a paired t-test what we're doing is we're getting rid of any variability due to the individual person or due to the individual person responding in the same way to two different questions. And we can see that when we look at the standard t-test. And we have the sample, st sample statistic minus the population parameter. Often the population parameter is zero, so your textbook will drop that off. Uh, so in a uh, you know, between subjects t-test, the sample statistic is like uh, the mean of group one minus the green mean of group two in a a uh, paired t-test, it would be, you know, the score of a subject on DV1 minus the score of subject on DV2. And then that would be over the standard error in the whole experiment. And when you're doing an independent t-test, uh, you have your, you know, sample statistics, the x1 minus x2, x bar 1 minus x bar 2. And then you have your standard error for the experiment. And in the independent t-test, part of that standard error, part of it, not all of it, but part, is the subject-related error variance. That is, 
uh, the error related to subjects being different from each other and responding to whatever in the experiment differently from each other. In a paired t-test, we have the sample statistic, uh, the response to dv1 minus the response to dv2 uh, divided by the standard error. But because it's a paired t-test and we assume that the subjects are responding uh, the same way to the two dependent variables, at least partially, we're able to take out some part of the error variance and some part of the variance related to uh, subjects being individual people and throw it out of the experiment and say, smell you later, that is, it's gone for good. And here's what that does. So let's say that the sample statistic stays the same we lower this, making it smaller, when the denominator is the, when the denominator is smaller and the numerator stays the same, the t value gets larger. And a larger t value is more likely to be statistically significant. And so that creates statistical power. If error for the subjects was still in here, that would make the denominator larger and likewise it would make the t-value smaller and less likely to be significant so that would reduce our statistical power. And this is something we're going to be doing in every inferential test that we're going to talk about this semester. Uh, we're going to be tossing out or trying to reduce error variance one way or another and one very common way uh, is to look for error variance associated to the subjects themselves. So moving on to our second type of data for a paired t-test, longitudinal variables, where we have the same person, the same variable, but different times. And so let's say we're looking at the development of the fundamental attribution error, and we're interested in uh, whether or not uh, there's a developmental change between the ages of 12 and 18 years on the FAE. So we do the same person, that is, we track people across uh, six years, uh, same variable, that is we do the Jones and Harris FAE uh, SA attribution paradigm uh, and then we just do it at different times when they're 12 years old and when they're 18 years old. And again now we can see whether or not they change in how they respond to the paradigm and also we're controlling for individual differences. Uh, and the third and final type of data that we can use is didactic data or data from dyads or pairs. So it's the same variable from different people that are related to each other somehow. And so uh, many times we look at distinguishable dyads, uh, that is a parent-child is a pair and it's pretty obvious who the parent is and who the child is. Husband-wife is a pair pretty obvious who the uh, husband is and the wife is. And so uh, we have the same variable and we just look at different pairs. So how would that actually work? Uh, we look at the husband-wife pair and we ask each one to rate the stress level in the family. And what we do is we look at the wife uh, and we subtract out the husband's data and a positive value means the wife is more stressed. If it's significant, then it means that the wife is uh, significantly more stressed than the husband. Uh, for owner and pet, well that may sound kind of silly. No, it's not. Observers rate uh, you know, uh, the owner and the pet on the agreeableness scale of the big five. And uh, they discover that there's no significant difference, which suggests that owners and pets are similar to each other in terms of their agreeableness, a very basic uh, personality factor. So uh, you could either have the people in the dyad make the ratings themselves or you could have an observer rate each member of the dyad. Uh, and then another way is using indistinguishable dyads, same-sex friends, uh, roommates, co-workers, uh, opponents, Raiders, twins, uh, you know, you don't know which one is which, it's not like owner pet, so you have to be basically arbitrary in deciding who is going to come first. Uh, Raiders is a very interesting 
uh, you know, sub uh, category of this, because then you can look to uh, see, uh, look at ratings that two people make of the same person. And uh, a subcategory of uh, the di uh, didactic data is matched pairs. And this is when you use a matching variable. And uh, so what a matching variable is, to remind you, is that you measure uh, this matching variable, whatever it is, before the uh, independent variable is implemented. And you assume that this matching variable is orthogonal to the independent variable, that is independent. Uh, it is uncorrelated or unrelated to the independent variable, but you assume that this matching variable is correlated with the dependent variable. And by doing this, you create uh, you know, arbitrary pairs of people on an important variable that will reduce the variability due to subjects in your experiment. What would that look like? Uh, you know, recently in the faculty caucus and the Senate, uh, you know, the uh, uh, you know student development tried to uh, uh, get the two-hour uh, freshman study uh, skills course changed to three hours, and they said that it would improve uh, you know students' ability to uh, ex ex excel. Excuse me, it's it's an early morning for me now. Excel in uh, uh, you know uh, classes. So an experiment you could do is basically look at the scores of people or the grades, the GPA, of people in the two, who graduate from the two-hour uh, you know, uh, freshman study skills course and then uh, a pilot of the three-hour freshman study skills course. However, notice that you can't really randomly assign subjects to the two conditions. You, you know, you can't, you know, randomly say you're going to get, you know, into this class and you're going to get into that one. So how do you deal with that and the best way possible? Well, the dependent variable will be college GPA. Okay. Uh, so what about a matching variable? Uh, high school, uh, you know, GPA. Uh, is not going to be related to whether or not they take a two or a three hour uh, class because that's really based on scheduling uh, and it is co correlated with the high with college GPA and so you can uh, do a matching uh, pairs with uh, you know a high school GPA what you do essentially is this you're looking at subjects here in the uh, two credit hour course and here in the three hour credit hour course and using their high school GPA you're creating a uh, hypothetical twin of each subject in the two hour course with a subject in the three hour course. It's all arbitrary and hypothetical but it, it really does work if you meet the rules of it's independent of the uh, independent variable or orthogonal to the independent variable and it correlates with the dependent variable. And so that's it. Uh, the dinosaur says goodbye, and I'll see you in class.